Hello everyone, Nad Labs here. Today we're going to be making something like this where we can kind of zoom in and out and we can pan around. So if I zoom in, you can see I can pan around and if I zoom out. So of course we're going to make a camera movement simple uh, project. I'll make this the tutorial version, so create. Okay, so there's two main concepts, uh, I guess two in the camera if you're looking down here on the right, but there's two main concepts that we have to cover. One is the world. And the world, if we just save as the world scene, uh, we have to attach a sprite. So I'm adding nodes by control A to add. As you can see over here, it's the same as this plus sign. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to texture. I'm going to go to noise texture, zoom out a bunch, uh, set the size to something big like 4,000 by 4,000. So that was like the big pink or I guess noise texture that you saw. And the way to add noise is by literally just going down. So I clicked over here and by going down to noise here, click click fast noise light, give it a second or two, it opens up as a giant noise texture. And when I zoom into like a regular view, as you can see, um, it may be very faint, but there's like a purple line there. That is where the camera is. We're gonna be able to move around. And the reason we want this right now, at least, is because if we're moving around on the blank texture or like over here in the gray, it's really hard to tell when I'm moving around without the rulers. So we just need something to move around with. So after that, we can go over here to our camera manager doesn't matter what you call it. I'm purposely going to call it cameraman editor. So um, I guess camera manager works too, but all we're going to do is we're going to add a camera and then we're going to go back here and we're going to attach a script. So we want to like move. So the node is going to move around and the camera is a child. The camera is a child of that node. So it's moving around with it. The reason we don't want to move the camera directly is because that kind of messes up things with the zoom and stuff. So uh, it's just easier to have it uh, detached. So we don't move the camera ever. So node, camera and we're kind of just moving this one around so move this around the camera gets moved i don't know if that made sense but it'll make sense with the code so uh all we really want to do is we want to go to our fun input function input function and what we want to say is if event so if the input event we're getting is a input let's just even if we're just building this from first principles so it has to be at least input event if we scroll down we could see mouse mouse button mouse motion so if it's mouse motion um then what we want to do is we want to like move stuff around right because like depending on if the mouse is moving or not we want to be able to do something so if the mouse if if the input event is mouse motion so what does that mean Ooh, if i turn on light oh now you can see my hands okay um if event is input event mouse motion so what we want to do is we want to move the camera manager around so that's easy we could just do global position plus equals event dot relative and relative is a property of the input event mouse motion. And it basically means like the difference in how much we move the mouse. So I can actually print that as well. So print, and it's a vector too, because you know, the, the screen is a vector too as well. Like 2D stuff is a vector too. So if we go over here to the world, click F1 or control F1 to see the the, the, the world scene, we click uh, F5 to run and we get nothing. Um, or at least I didn't even try it, but uh, if I'm moving my mouse around here, um, if I'm moving my mouse around here, then you can see like nothing's happening because we don't have the camera manager in here. So I just click this link button and I can instantiate the camera manager, which is over there in the center. And now you can see, and you can see that when I move, uh, so if I just bring this window down here to the left, the more I move my mouse, the bigger those numbers get, but the less I move my mouse, the smaller those numbers are. And also like I'm able to move around, but the issue is, um, Click, uh, clicking is not working. Okay, so how do I make it work if it's clicked? Well, that's also pretty simple. Well, what we'd want to do is we want to kind of take the same concept over here that if event is input event mouse something. Well, remember when we were going through the, like the, if I click control space, you can see I get like this auto complete here. Well, instead of mouse motion, we can do mouse button. So we can get the click and I'm actually just gonna click. So you can get the idea there. Like input event mouse button. If you read it word for word, it tells you what it is. So one thing we can do is if event dot button index. So if inside this input event mouse motion, uh, sorry, mouse button, you can see we get button index. So the event has a button index, which is kind of a tricky concept. So this, the properties here change depending on um, this end part, end part. So because we're event and the event is a mouse button, we have event button index, and if that button index is mouse button left, then we can say is pressed is equal to true. 
What is is pressed? Is pressed is going to be a variable we're going to be making, but to be honest, you could call it is pressed something something. It doesn't matter as long as it's the same. And then you could say if event is a mouse motion. So like if there's motion and we have something pressed, then we can move around. So uh, you can see nothing happens and I press. Okay, now I'm moving around, but it's kind of in the backwards direction, which I didn't realize earlier. And now if I let go, you see that it doesn't stop moving around. That's because once this is set true, there's nowhere that um, it, where it gets set to false, if you really think about it. Instead of saying true here, what we should say instead is if event is pressed, because this dot pressed literally tells us over here that it returns a bool if the button state at that moment in time is pressed or not. Now you might be wondering, oh, if event is mouse button um, is running here, so we get mouse button press. So if I click first click or second click, this will run. And then we say if event button index is mouse button left, well, okay, um, mouse button left, yes, that is always going to be happening in a way if you think about it because the mouse button is or isn't being pressed. And honestly, we could just leave it as this. We don't really need to have anything else there. And if you think about it, yeah, that works. But now it also works with left click. It also works with middle click. It works with like, I guess, okay. It works if you, yeah, middle click. It will work with middle click. Yeah, it works with middle click. It works with right click. So the reason we wanna have it as if event button index is mouse button left is because now it only works if I save the scene. You can see it updates real time and now I can move around, but it doesn't work with the right click or the middle click, which is something you may or may not want. Okay, now that we have that figured out and sorted, what we can do now is we can also uh, limit by, or we could work around uh, the scroll button. So we could do again, if button index is equal, equal to mouse button. So, so you can see over here, so wheel up, let's do a zoom in function. And the way we're going to access that is we're just gonna do camera 2d.zoom minus equals 0. 0 0.1. So now when you scroll up, we're going to zoom out, I believe. Maybe zoom in. Okay, so we zoomed out. Yeah. Um, that's if we subtract. And then the same thing, just copy paste it over here, is going to be mouse button wheel. I just get rid of this down. And then all we have to do is change uh, this to plus. And then what we get is camera 2D zoom. So if I scroll inward or if I scroll down, it's zooming in. And you can see we zoom in. And then we can zoom out and we can still move around. So there I'm moving around and then zoom in. So you can see everything works as is. Now, obviously you would have to like kind of factor in, um, you know, if you're zoomed in close, then you don't move around as much. And if you're zoomed out far, then you zoom around more. Uh, these are things that I'm not going to cover because they're a math challenge and they're not necessarily a Godot inputting challenge because this is very Godot heavy syntax. Uh, if you really wanted to take it a step further, uh, this is just a very like neat way to do a, like a min max version. So uh, we have a zoom speed here, which you know uh, effectively changes how far you zoom in. So if you change how much zoom speed is uh, in comparison to the camera zoom itself, uh, the camera zoom itself, then you'll get something different. So uh, this is just like a fancy version of it, but again, the same idea that, you know, this one has a max, so no matter how much I scroll inwards, I stop. No matter how much I scroll outwards, there's a stop, there's a limit. And then obviously there's a, a certain speed at which I can zoom around at. Yeah, there's a lot of extensions, but I just wanted to get the basics out there. And that's all I have to say. Have an amazing day.